Hello, everyone, and welcome to July's LRD Library webinar on power searching. Today, we're going to be looking at how you can improve your search skills. We'll have time for questions and answers at the end, both recorded and unrecorded, and the recording will be posted on our YouTube and shared with all registrants. Please feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat at any time. We will save most of them for the end. Goals of today's webinar are listed on the screen here. We're going to look at keywords, search tools built into databases, Boolean operators, some advanced search tricks, and how you can put these all together to build search strings. So first things first, keywords. Keywords are informative words used in an information retrieval system, like a library database, to indicate the content of an item. Keywords are the important terms, concepts or phrases which you can use to help search in library databases or in other databases like Google. Keywords are a crucial part of your research. They are the key to starting your search and to finding the best sources. If your keywords aren't right, you'll have trouble finding articles and books that you can use. So how do you find keywords? Well, first things first, look at your thesis or your research statement and underline the most important words, ideas, and topics. These are your starter keywords. From here, I actually recommend underlining, like physically underlining or highlighting these keywords, phrases, or concepts so they stand out from things like the ands and ofs and does. Next, you're going to need some additional keywords. And the reason you do this is because sometimes the words you have in your head or on your paper are going to be different than the words researchers and writers are using to discuss the similar topics that you're looking at. And so this is why you want different vocabulary. So first, you can start by finding synonyms. Don't get tunnel vision and only focus on the keywords in your thesis. Look for synonyms to those words, and you can use a website like thesaurus.com or a print thesaurus to help you find related terms. The reason you do this, as I mentioned before, is that similar words can find similar things, and the words you're using might not be the same words another author or creator uses, even though you are looking at the same topic. Next, you can expand your idea. And what you're looking here is for, you know, overarching ideas or topics that generally cover your thesis. So if you want to write a paper about gentrification in Washington, D.C., it's worth looking for articles on gentrification in all of D.C. or gentrification trends overall. You can also narrow your idea. So you can find a space specific example. If you're writing a paper on Twitter, you know, pick a specific kind of account. Do you want to look at satire accounts, celebrity accounts, or bot accounts and see what you can find in that area? You can also look at specific examples. If you're writing about a general idea, it can be useful to include specific examples of that idea as keywords. For instance, if you are writing about female Black authors, you could use Octavia E. Butler as a specific example. You can also look for related ideas. And so these are key terms that are related, but not directly about your topic. So if you're writing a paper about, say, healthy eating techniques, you might also want to look for articles on other healthy habits like exercise or sleep. Information you may need could be included in those kinds of articles. The image on the screen here is a keyword searching activity. It walks you through ways to develop your keywords. This is a useful exercise because it gets you to think about your topic and your thesis and your research before you jump into various databases. Plus, this means you will have a list of keywords ready to mix and match once you're ready to search. Something like this can take five to 15 minutes to put together, but it's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run because your work is gonna be tracked in one location. So once you have your keywords, it's now time to jump into the databases. And library databases, organized and searchable online resources, which provide access to information like articles, journals, ebooks, and media. There's more information than you could possibly need in these databases. So you, you know, they have included tools to help you find what you need. So first things first within these databases, there are two different kinds of search in most of the databases. Simple search, 
Basically, it looks like a Google search bar and it's a great way to start. Just drop in your keywords and some databases will even auto-populate with recommendations. There's also advanced search and this basically guides you through multiple fields and checkboxes and filters to provide you more exact results to start with. And what you choose to start with depends on how you like to search. You can't go wrong either way. Also within these databases, there are lots of filters. And you know, there can be many of them depending on what database you're in. Sometimes databases and libraries call these filters limiters or facets, but they're all just filters. They operate the same way filters do in Amazon. These help you narrow the search results to provide more relevant information. Popular filters include things like full text, scholarly or peer-reviewed sources, type of material, so you could select things like articles or ebooks or newspapers or images or audio, or publication date, so you can limit your search to something, you know, that was printed in a certain year or within a certain time span or, you know, within five to ten years. You can also limit by language or subject matter. Subject-specific databases include filters based on the discipline and the topic they cover. The filters available change according to what is in those databases. Some subject-specific filters include things like geographic location. So this is either where the item was created or where the item studies. Business databases and news databases can also have you search by company or organization. Same thing, depending on the database, you might be able to search by a specific person. Healthcare related databases or medical databases can have things like clinical or medical categories. You can also search by demographic data, things like age, sex, nationality, things like that. Our education databases and other databases will have things like educational level or the intended audience of the research. And some of our more engineering or legal-based databases will have things like standards that people have to work towards or specific laws. When you're searching in databases, you can also use things like Boolean searching. And Boolean operators tell the database how to search for information and not just what to search for. These operators are named for their inventor, George Boole, and can be used in almost any kind of searchable database. When you connect your keywords with and, for example, by typing in dairy products and export and Europe into a search box, your search results will contain items that include all the keywords you entered. Using and helps make your searches more specific and usually reduces the number of search results that you get. When you connect your keywords with the Boolean operator or, for example, by typing fruit or vegetables or cereals into the search box, your search results will contain items that have at least one of these keywords. This is a helpful approach when you are searching for concepts that have many synonyms or can be expressed in several different ways. Something like global warming and climate change. Those are two similar keywords and when you're using or, you'll search for both of them. You will usually get more search results when you use the keyword or the Boolean operator or. You can use not to exclude particular words or phrases from your search results. For example, if you are interested in finding resources about fruit, but you don't care about apples, you can type fruit, not apples into the search box and, and exclude results that include the word apples. You can Get more specific by searching, you know, trying a few different things that we're going to cover here. Quotation marks are one of our favorite and most popular recommendations for advanced search. Putting quotation marks around a phrase when you enter it into a search box, for example, by typing climate change or global warming, allows you to search for an exact phrase. That is, your search results will contain articles that have the words you put in quotation marks right next to each other, and not articles or other material that have the one word in one place in the article and another word in another possibly unrelated place. Quotation marks can be very helpful when you are searching for a concept that isn't expressed with only one word. Again, 
climate change. It's a keyword phrase. So you want to put that in quotation marks to search it as a single phrase. Quotation marks work in almost every single search tool, and this includes Google. Most databases will allow you to use an asterisk as a wildcard, which allows you to search for a root word and all of its different endings. For instance, using EU, E-D-U-C-A-T asterisk will search for educate, educates, educated, education, educating, educational, and educator. However, you have to be careful with this. Sometimes you can find unrelated words that have the same root. So if you may try, you know, typing P-O-L-I-C asterisk to search for policy or policies, you will also find things like police or policing. So when you use a truncation like this, you want to make sure you're getting as much of the root word as possible. You can also use uh, this as a wild card within a word. So for example, if you enter W-O-M asterisk N, you will search for woman or women. Most databases use an asterisk as a wild card or for truncation, but some use a question mark. You can check the database's help page to see which symbol they use. Next up is parentheses. In math problems and equations, parentheses can show you the order of operations. So essentially, which calculations should happen first? This is similar to how databases work. You can use parentheses to ensure a particular order of operations in your searches. Without parentheses, databases will typically associate terms connected by the Boolean operator and first. If you want different terms connected to be processed first, you need to put them in parentheses. So for example, if I were to type climate change or global warming and sea level without parentheses, I would get some materials about climate change and then items I would get if I search global warming and sea level rise. Now, if I type in climate change or global warming within parentheses first and then add and sea level, this will contain the keyword phrase sea level and how it's connected to either the term climate change or global warming. So using parentheses here lets you search both of those uh, key terms in the quotation marks in one search. Like quotation marks, using parentheses can be helpful in searching for concepts that cannot be easily expressed with one word. And like quotation marks, parentheses work on almost any search tool, including Google. Proximity searching is one of the most advanced search techniques. And in proximity searching, you're searching for your keywords near one another. In proximity searching, you tell the database how closely you want your keywords to appear near one another in the selected search text. So this is useful when you are looking for concepts that might be expressed by different phrases, or if you want two different concepts to be linked closely together. There are different ways to do proximity searches. Um, which technique you use depends on the database. So check the database help page or ask a librarian if you need assistance in doing proximity searching. Some databases offer a drop-down menu to connect terms, while others ask you to use N for near or W for within plus a number. The number tells the database how many words away the two keywords can be. So for example, if I type in climate change N10 crops, I can see um, on the screen here the terms are bolded. You'll see that these are near one another. I've asked the database to search for material where the phrase climate change is within 10 words of the word crops. Databases vary in how many words apart they allow you to search, but the most effective level of using proximity searching is usually between 2 and 50 words. The lower the number, the narrower your search. And a quick and dirty way to do proximity searching is to limit your search to the abstract or summary field when you're doing an advanced search. When you do this, you tell the database that you want your keywords to appear in the abstract and summary of a particular item. This is a great way to quickly narrow down your search, but not all articles or eBooks have abstracts and you might miss out on some great content if you immediately start with this method. 
And so, as I mentioned earlier, just like math problems, there is an order of operations when searching. Instead of numbers, databases use your keywords and your operators. First, when you're doing your search, it will look for things connected with the word and. Then it will look for the word or. And finally, it will exclude anything connected by the word not. So just like in math, you can force it to look at certain things by putting them in parentheses. Anything in the parentheses will be searched or everything else is connected together. And so you can combine any or all of these power searching techniques. And when you do this, we call it creating a uh, search string. A search string is a combination of keywords, truncation symbols, and Boolean operators used in searching information databases. Now, this is a sample search string that moves from a broad idea to a very narrow idea. In the first search, you're just looking at the phrase climate change. And as you can see, each string builds on the previous one. And this is a best practice in searching to start broad and then slowly add more keywords and more connecting material to help build your search string. So by the time we get to the bottom, we have a search string that is looking for an item that is about climate change or global warming, and is too connected to a crop that is not corn. And then those ideas must be within 25 words of the keyword wheat and within 25 words of the keyword blight. This final search string is so narrow, it would likely only yield five results or less. In fact, I tested this in our database academic search premiere and it only found five articles. So this is why you wanna start broad and work your way down. If you start with an incredibly narrow search string at the beginning, it's likely that you will miss a lot of good material. And so building search strings is kind of like making a sandwich. You want to track your work or your recipe if you're building a sandwich in case something works so that you can recreate it. Or if something doesn't work, you can pull it out. And so you can create several different clusters of strings, again, like ingredients, where you could put all of your parentheses together. And then this way, you can mix and match them. And then you want to try various databases with those search strings or parts of search strings, because different databases databases have different items and you'll find different material. And so you don't have to go it alone. The library is here to help. Our website is where you can find all of the library's databases or all of our contact information. You can email us at ask at udc.libanswers.com. We also have an online chat that you can just pop in your question and we're happy to help. Or you can call us at 202-274-5104, and we're happy to help you. And so now I'd love to provide time for Q&A, both recorded and unrecorded. Thank you for attending today, and anyone who is registered for this event will receive the recording sometime this afternoon. So I'll just give a minute or two to see if there are any questions. Right, not seeing anything come in, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.